before she flies away and disappears. Look at that. Isn't she nice? That's a big female prey mantis. The males don't usually get as big as her because um, as you all know the females actually eat the the uh, male prey mantis during mating. They start gnawing on the eyes and the head and work their way down. There she is, she's looking at us. Yeah, I'm talking about you. She's gorgeous, isn't she? All right, we'll stop scaring her. This is me day. There's the choppy dogs down the backyard there. It's uh, the last few days have been like this. They've been absolutely um, cloudy and I'll put the logs up so you can see. Excuse me, but every now and then we'll get a burst of um, sunshine or a really good cloud edge effect and Wow, it certainly makes a difference You're gonna be all right there. You're not gonna be too scared. I don't like scaring them because I'm big and She's going oh my god. Oh my god But it's okay. It's okay All right uh, there were concerns about me mounting the computer this way, okay, and uh, because it's a, an air-cooled computer, and the fears were the fins um, are, are the wrong way around. I actually thought it was more important to uh, not let the dust get in any of the ports than to worry about a little bit of dust on the top <coughs> excuse me so what we're going to do we've got my temperature gauge here we're going to look at the temperature first okay it's uh, 25 degrees celsius okay you can see what it is in fahrenheit there okay i've got this temperature gun okay so it's uh 30 at the bottom and as we go up 37 in the middle heading up towards the top okay so you can actually see by that but yeah the, the aluminium if there's air in the shed well the fins sort of would help but there's no air in this shed um, unless the fans are all on but being aluminium and being heat heat rises okay so it's I've got no problem at all with that um, ever overheating and the fact that I'm only using like you know 14 15 percent of its capacity and it's like anything else um, like my inverters and everything else if you're going to use something to 100% of its capacity um, then you buy uh, something twice as big like this you know um, uh, it won't even see 50% of its capacity these ones here when I'm really running a heavy load might see 60% of their total capacity and they'll probably surge you out to sometimes 80 90 percent of their capacity um, especially with the big air conditioner when that starts um, and I also had some people saying that what I said about um, inductive loads and an inductive loads is an air conditioner um, a fridge or a freezer and you know they said oh, I'm wrong you know <sighs> If people say, oh, these, our, our brand is not very good at running inductive loads, and there's a lot of, a lot of brands that say that. Um, well, a fridge and freezer is also an inductive load, so if it's going to blow up under inductive loads, why are you even pr producing it? I, I run, since I got these units, the very first um, time I had them up and running successfully, I was running air conditioners because it was summertime. All right, um, and and they've been doing that ever since they've been on my wall. Every summertime, and even sometimes in winter, I use a little one, 
I did this year as a, as a heater because it's a reverse cycle. So, I mean, if they're adamant that their gear won't run inductive loads and just don't buy it, eh? Because it won't even, because your fridge and freezer motor is an inductive load. All right, it's a little compressor, the same as an air, com air conditioner. It's got a compressor in it. Um, the classics are doing well. They've totally got different operating systems in them, but they came, but they, uh, in, if you have a look in, in them and you click on them, they work out the state of charge differently, but they both agree all the time. 97%, 97%. But if you look in the logs, um, like this one's brand new and this one's really old, and they both work out the state of charge in a slightly different manner, but they both come to the same conclusion. And that's, that's awesome. Good job, Midnight Classic. I totally love your gear. Same as the uh, MPP solar gear. I love that too. <coughs> Some people try and do weird things with them, like run little torch batteries. You know those, um, oh, they call them a power wall. But they go and buy all these cheap um, torch batteries. Some of them are second hand, some of them are new, you know. It costs a lot of money. It actually costs a lot more than just to go and buy a, a real battery bank. And they try and run um, these inverters. And these inverters aren't designed for that. They are the same as uh, wet, wet, at, wet battery banks. You, you have to buy one that's got like, I'm pretty sure MPP make one that, that puts out higher volts. It's got larger capacitors in it, especially for wet battery banks. You'll have to ask them about that, but I, I can remember seeing it on their site. The units I have are for sealed batteries. Sealed lead acid batteries. Okay, what's a sealed lead acid battery, you ask? A sealed lead acid battery is one that you that never needs equalising. It doesn't need to put out the big volts. Um, AGM's a sealed lead acid battery. You can get sealed wet lead acid batteries that you should also... I wouldn't touch a wet one, a wet sealed lead acid battery, because I can't see how they will work properly unless you equalise them, but you can't equalise them because they're sealed and they'll end up blowing up like a football or you know that's no good I just can't see how you would do that but um, for AGMs uh, um, gels um, and all that they're great and some people say oh gels are better than AGMs blah 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 um, don't buy into the hype people a gel is just what the just the medium, the acid stored in. AGMs, they're stored in a glass mat. Uh, what's the difference between them? Um, the gels, you've got to be really careful you don't overvolt because they can dry out and damage really easy. The AGMs are a bit more robust and they're great for four-wheel drives and they'll take a hammer in. Um, but they're all the same chemical compound, it's just the medium that it's stored in. And people are paying thousands and thousands of dollars extra for these batteries. Oh, they've got tubular cells there, you know. Um, they've got silver topping on the top, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, they come chocolate coated, you know. Um, don't buy into the hype. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, some of these, some of these, uh, uh, I watch very little TV, but I'm sure um, TV is, you know, it's not good for you people. Stop watching TV and stop buying into the hype of all this bullshit advertising. Um, you know, uh, my system's there, it's live online, you can see what it does. <coughs> Now there was, uh, I, I was talking to a, um, a company the other day and they said, Chris, he said, I had to send a fella over to your channel to watch one of your videos on your batteries. 
Um, let me go get the keys. Hang on a minute. Look, I try and make my videos really simple, okay? And it's not because I think these are all dumb. It's because I don't know how much you know about solar power. Okay? And anyway, this one bloke, he bought a bank similar to this. I don't know if it was a three or four. I think it was a similar bank to this and he and he thought he'd save a, it's a thousand amp hour battery, okay? One thousand amp hour battery. And he said, well I don't need all these extra friggin' cables. So what he did was just wire it up the first battery. Alright, so I'm just gonna explain this again. Um, real simple. Okay. It is a thousand amp hour battery. Perfectly right. However, it's got four two volt cells in it. Totally separate. So this was 250 amp hour. This is 250 amp hour. This is 250 amp hour. This is 250 amp hour. And together, okay, wired like that, you end up with four 250 amp hour battery banks. Okay, totaling 48 volts. Okay, so by the time you put them on the bus bar, you have one battery bank of a thousand amp hour. All right, on the bus bar, go into the shed. That's a thousand amp hour battery, or four 250 amp hour banks. So what this chap had done was just wire in one and thinking that was it, all he needed. So I'm not making fun of you, bloke. Um, it's a real newbie mistake, okay? Uh, anyone could probably do it. Um, you should have really talked to the bloke you bought him off first and he should have explained it to you and when you buy these batteries make sure you get the inner connects that's these little things with them all right don't let them because I mean they can order them with or without them when they order them from China I buy mine from eSolar uh, Silvio and he does the right thing. He orders the interconnects with the batteries and when he sells the batteries the interconnects are included in the price Okay And it does make a really really nice uh, Battery bank But please if you want a thousand amp hour battery bank use them all Okay like that so 48 volts 48 volts 48 volts, 48 volts, 250 amp hour, 250 amp hour, 250 amp hour, 250 amp hour, 1000 amp hour by the time it goes to the shed. Alright, that's something I just thought I'd clear up real quick um, with the batteries, okay? I know some of you are going, oh Chris you're treating us all like idiots, I'm not. You know, there are people out there that generally misunderstand things and they just don't know. Um, and they don't know how to wire stuff. You, you see it all the time, you know. Um, it's not just foreigners. I mean, we got them in Australia and, you know, oh, we're engineers. We know how to do this. Yeah, now if I put this battery balancer there and cut them all different lengths, it'll work good, eh? And then they end up blowing their gear up and they blow the, and they blame the gear and not themselves. And then they get a professional to come in and put a system in for them. And oh, this one works great. Yeah, that's because somebody that knew what it was doing put it in. Um, and that's the difference, you know. If you're going to do, do it yourself, um, do your research. If you're going to buy inverters to run homemade lithium banks, do your research. Find out if the unit will do it. Okay? 
um, I'm always telling you, you know, do your own research. These work great for me because I'm using them how they're meant to be used. I'm using them with the batteries they're designed for. Okay. Um, it's pretty, pretty easy, people. Research isn't hard to do. Um, just takes time. All right. There's my video. Um, enjoy it or not, but keep safe and enjoy your day because uh, yeah, it's a pretty good world we live in. Bye for now.